Hey everybody, welcome back. So it's good to be out in the mountains once again. It's been a little while, about three months since I've been back to work. And after being off for most of last year, I gotta tell you, it's good to be earning a regular paycheck again. So this time out, I got another stove test video for you. This one's a variation on my recent pack stove build, but I'm kind of excited about it because it's larger, lighter, and cheaper than any pack stove I've built before. Now, as you can hear in the background, there's a little bit of a wind blowing and there's actually a wind warning here for tonight with some snow in the forecast. Temperature's not that cold, but it's gonna dip down here tonight. Once again, I've also got a special dinner plan for you. That is if the pack stove holds together and does its job properly. So come on along, this should be a fun one. Well, I'm only a couple of miles in, but even though it's well below freezing, I'm working up a pretty good sweat already. So to avoid getting everything wet all the way through, I've taken off my outer layers and right down to my base. Unfortunately, all that has to get carried on my pack. So most of you guys have seen this spot before. It's a little bit of firewood left there and the remnants of my table and stool. Just to give you an idea of what I'm doing here, I got my paracord ridge line strung between these two trees and the tarp for my tarp shelter hung roughly over top to give myself an idea of what the footprint's gonna look like. And since the snow is only about six inches deep, I'm just gonna clear some of it away using my snowshoes uh, to get down to the vegetation underneath. Well, I managed to get the snow pretty much cleared out and the two sides of the tarp shelter stretched out. This time of year, it's pretty much impossible to get a tent peg in the ground. So what I do is just lash each side to a piece of four inch deadfall uh, that I cut with my silky saw there. The last thing I'm gonna do is just fill in that gap with a little bit of snow to help keep the wind out. The next thing I wanna do here is to give you just a quick first look at the new stove I brought along. Well, I've still got a little bit of daylight before the weather gets any worse. Now, the last stove I built up on the channel uh, was pretty pleased with how it all came together. I thought it was a solid design. It went together fairly easy in the field. It burned really well. But to be honest, at five pounds, I was thinking it was still a little bit heavy, especially because I like to come out in the mountains here carrying only a backpack in the wintertime. Everything essentially has to fit into that. So every pound counts. So what I did is I kind of went back to the drawing board and back to Home Depot looking for some lighter material, thinking that was the easiest way to, to get the weight down. In the last stove, I used furnace duct end caps. Uh, those are pre-bent, uh, about 22 gauge, so they're fairly thick uh, and honestly fairly heavy. The only other material they had there was what they're calling joist liner. Instead of being pre-bent, it comes in sheets, 16 inches wide by 36 inches long, and it's 30 gauge, quite a bit thinner, quite a bit lighter, but being sheets means that you gotta bend everything. Now, in the last video, I showed you how to do all the bending. The design is sound. Uh, basically, just come up with the measurements and use the bending tool and make your own bends. So that's what I did here. Really easy to do. And being sheets, I, I wasn't restricted to the 8-inch width that the end caps come in. This new stove, I went with a full 10-inch height. I still kept the 8 inches wide. Uh, and the 16-inch inch width, by the time you get the, the bends on the end, translates down to 14 inches. So bigger than the last stove, lighter than the last stove, 
And the other great part is that those large sheets at my Home Depot anyway, are less than $10. So two of those sheets, 20 bucks plus hardware, and you can put this stove together. Now, uh, to add a little bit of extra rigidity, uh, given that the material is thinner, what I basically did, instead of doing single folds on the sides, wherever there was a single fold, I did a double fold, uh, half inch this way, and then another half inch down this way. Really wasn't any, any more difficult, a little bit extra time, but it worked out uh, exactly like the last stove did. To save a little bit of weight on the hardware, instead of using quarter inch threaded rods, I'm using 1024 threaded rods. They're a little bit longer because the stove is 10 inches high, uh, but altogether, this stove comes in at three pounds and that's a full two pounds lighter than my last stove. So it's bigger, it's lighter, and because you're using sheets, it's also cheaper. All right, I'm well into the second burn on this new stove here now. The first one was outside the tarp shelter. I got it good and hot out there. And the second one in here has been going for about an hour. I think my initial concerns about the thinner gauge steel uh, warping or maybe buckling uh, were a little bit unfounded. Everything seems to be working out just fine. There's a little bit of warping on some of these bigger panels, but as the stove continues to heat up, uh, everything seems to be evening out. Just a closer look at the double fold I did on that front edge there. And uh, on the side edge, I only did a single fold. I think next time I would just double fold everything just for a, a little bit of extra rigidity. This time I also double folded the, the entrance to the, the, the cutout for the door there. It, uh, it's got a half inch fold just back onto the inside. So you get a nice clean edge, you're not gonna cut yourself on there. And it also makes that um, opening just a little bit more uh, rigid as well. This door is from a previous build, so it's a little bit thicker. And honestly, that uh, seems to be working out pretty well. I would probably do that again next time, uh, just to be sure it's gonna seal properly. I know I promised you something extra special for dinner here tonight in honor of the new stove build. So I'm going to be making some smoked moose liver stew that came out of the smoker at home just yesterday. Turned out pretty well. Some mixed frozen vegetables are going in there. And something else I've been fooling around with lately at home, uh, some homemade sauerkraut. So I brought a little bit of that along. It's been uh, in the crock for about three weeks now and coming along very nicely. As a little bit of thickener, got some corn flour. And as always, uh, beef bouillon cube for flavor. That's been simmering on there for about 45 minutes. Those veggies have rehydrated nicely. I've had a chance to taste it and that sauerkraut gives it a nice little bit of a fresh zing to it. And for anyone that doesn't like smoked moose liver, maybe a little hamburger substitution and uh, things would be just perfect. It's just after six o'clock in the morning and I have to say that I'm really happy with how the stove performed overnight. No problem with that thinner 30 gauge steel warping or anything like that. And the extra height on the firebox was perfect to be able to get a little bit more wood in there to extend the burn time. It's just after eight o'clock in the morning, packing things up here. It's minus nine Celsius, so I don't wanna stand around too long, cold fingers and toes, but I thought I'd give you a quick post burn analysis on this stove, just taking it apart. And uh, there's one of the side panels. Yeah, you know, there is a little bit of warping there, but it's essentially, you know, the, the same <laughs> shape, if you wanna say, that's the, the bottom, I guess. A little bit of 
deformation there and the top. Overall, not too bad. About what I would have expected. Definitely not as thick or as uh, rigid as the end cap material. But I think for a lightweight stove, fairly inexpensive, it uh, it did what I needed it to do here. I, I guess the, the true test will be a few more burns. We'll bring it back out again and see how it does in the long run.